All right. Good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. How's everyone doing today? Um, I hope you had a uh, good Monday. We're on to Tuesday now, and we're going to do day two of our lesson with negative exponents. Okay, so um, your homework today, you will have a practice worksheet, which you'll need to either print out or you'll need to put up on your screen and copy and paste off there. So uh, your choice, if you don't have a printer accessible, just go ahead and use, um, you just bring it up on the screen and just copy, write it down from there. Um, if you have a printer available, it's easiest probably to print it out and then just do the work on the screen or on the paper. I think you'll probably have enough room for that, okay? Um, what did you guys think of the video of the week late yesterday? It was it was interesting. Um, so anyway, all right. Uh, I hope also that you are kind of sharing or that you are sharing in the um, check and review um, or re reflect that you are sharing some some insights um, on how you're doing. Um, and I just I just want to know how, how things are going. Um, we are going to be doing um, a live session today, um, I believe, on Google Meet uh, later on or at, at um, this afternoon, Mr. Halfar should be getting you that information. So just be on the lookout for that. I look forward to seeing some of you then. Um, all right, let's get started here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to be talking about with negative exponents again. Um, but the first thing I want to do is I want to do some review. Now, this is really, really important that you kind of follow along with me here and that you are understanding how to do this. Okay. Um, because we're going to be working, sorry, I need the big screen here. Uh, we're going to be working on a lot of exponents and you need to memorize this stuff. Now, this is stuff we've gone over. Um, so it should be good. Excellent the fifth times x to the third. Well, x to the fifth, you know, that's, um, oh, it doesn't let me write here. Just a second. Hold on. I just got to do something here. Um, sometimes when I do this, if I just pick a different pen, now I should be able to write. Let's pick a different color. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's try it out. Okay. x to the fifth times x to the third. That's x two, three, four, five times x to the third. Ooh, that's a horrible X. Anyway, you notice that. Now, hopefully you're starting to catch on. What is a shortcut here? What can you do with all that? Instead of writing it out all like that, you can just see X to the fifth times X to the third. You should have gotten X to the eighth. What is a shortcut? You add the exponents. If the base is the same, you can add the exponents, and that is an ugly eight, but hopefully you can see that it is an eight. How about this case here? We've got x to the fifth times x to the third. Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to write x to the fifth five times, so I'm just going to do, or three times, so I'm just going to do x to the fifth times x to the fifth. I'm not going to write those x's out um, in there five times because I just don't have room. But x to the fifth three times. Now, if I did expand each one of those five times, and then go from there, I can see that I would get x to the 15th. What is the shortcut, ladies and gentlemen? How do I get from here to here? I'm not adding this time when they're outside the parentheses. I actually, what? Multiply the exponents and get my answer there. So I can multiply those there to get my final answer. Now, last but not least, this is what we kind of started talking about uh, just recently. x to the fifth over x to the third. Now that of course implies division, but in this case when I've got these situations here, I can use the giant one to say, hey, an x over an x is a one, a one, a one, and I get, oh, two x's at the top left, so x to the second power. Now I can do it that way, but you should also start recognizing what can I also do with five and three to get two, I can subtract. So in this case, I am adding. In this case, I am multiplying. In this case, I am subtracting the exponents to get the answers. All of this review is very important. We're going to address it more tomorrow uh, on a worksheet, but I wanted to kind of address this with you right now because it's going to help us in the problems that we're doing next. Now, we're not doing a whole bunch of problems today. We're doing problem 883 and 884. However, these can be a little confusing and there's a lot to them, so please make sure that you are paying full attention. I don't want you distracted with anybody around, no siblings, no parents, no other people distracting you. I want you to really focus on this right now. If you have a phone turned on or if you have a, or if your phone next to you or if you have something else going, please pause and listen here and follow along with me because they're going to seem very simple, um, but there's a lot that goes into it. OK, so the more you pay attention, the easier it's going to be. Please believe me on that. OK, all right, here we go. It says create a fraction from these expressions. Now they want just to create a fraction. OK, so please be aware of that. Then show how to use giant one to simplify. Now. 
based on what we just talked about here. You see this problem right here, 6 to the 5th times 6 to the negative 3rd? That is the same as this stuff over here. Now, we know from that there that if the base is the same, I can just add the exponents. So you should know, oh, well, the base is the same, so I could do 5 plus negative 3. Oh, 5 plus negative 3 is 6 to the 2nd. My answer should be 6 to the 2nd. Now, that is correct, but we're not following directions if we do that. So let's see if we can prove it doing the fraction. So 6 to the 5th times 6 to the negative 3rd. Now, if you remember yesterday, we talked about negative exponents, and we said that if we have a negative exponent, 6 to the negative 3rd, I'm going to write it over here, I don't want negative exponents. I want to get rid of it. 6 to the negative 3rd, I can change that to 1 over 6 to the 3rd. If I put it as a denominator, that changes the exponent to a positive number. Therefore, this x to the 5th, let me erase this, all this stuff here. Okay, there's a lot going on there. Okay, 6, um, six to the 5th would be 6, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 6 to the negative 3rd. That, when I switch it down to the bottom, it becomes 6 positives. Okay, now yes, I'm multiplying every single one of these right there, so I should technically have that. So basically, I get 6 to the 5th over 6 to the negative 3rd. Now, when I do that, what, oh, I'm sorry, when I move it to the denominator, it stays positive. My bad there, I, I messed up there. But then, now I can use a giant 1. This is a giant 1, this is a giant 1, this is a giant 1. So therefore, when I do this, I end up with 6 to the second. But check this out. See that right there? See as I wrote it as a fraction? Do you remember what we just talked about here too? Look at this, look at this. When I have exponents in a fraction form like that, division, I can subtract the exponents. So 5 minus 3 is 2. So three different ways to show that that gives me 6 to the second. Make sense? Let's try it again. Second problem, letter B. W to the fifth times w to the negative second. Now again, I could subtract those, or I could, I'm sorry, add those exponents, and I should get w to the third. Let's see if I can get that if I get the other ones. Well, first of all, I'm going to leave w to the fifth alone, but w to the negative second is a negative exponent, so I need to bring it down. I get w to the second. There, I can now three, four, five over ww. Those are horrible w's. I hate this. All right, but anyway, um, then I can do my giant one. Cancel that out. Cancel that out. Oh, one, two, three, w to the third, which is also the same as five minus two is three. So the correct answer, w to the third. Okay, now, I want you to do letter C. So I want you to pause the video. And again, don't give me this fight about not pausing the video. Please pause the video. Please write this problem down in your paper. I really want you to try this problem and see if you can get it right, OK? So please pause it, try it, and then we'll check it. OK, I'm hoping you paused it. I'm hoping you tried it. OK, 10 to the negative fourth times 10 to the fifth. If I add the exponents, I get 10 to the first. If I expand it, oh, wait a minute. Let me let me write as a fraction. 10 to the fifth stays on the top. 10 to the negative fourth goes to the denominator and becomes 10 to the fourth. Now I can expand it out. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 over 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Giant one cancels all that out. I'm left with 10 to the first. Oh, and 5 minus 4 is 1 as well, 10 to the first. So hopefully you got that right. Correct answer, 10 to the first. Making sense? So whenever you got a negative exponent, you want to get rid of the negative exponent by moving it to the denominator. That cancels out the negative exponent. It becomes a positive exponent then, and then you can do the operations that we just reviewed. One more screen here, okay? So now what they want us to do is, now it's time to reverse your thinking. If negative exponents can create fractions, then fractions can be written as expressions with negative exponents. Simplify each expression below. Write your answer in two different forms as a fraction and as an expression with a negative exponent. Now you will almost always never be asked to write a negative exponent, but in this case they want to make sure that you can do that and, and write it with a negative exponent, okay? So here we go. Let's look at this first problem here. Now, 
when you see this here, if I expanded it out, I would get 6 times 6. Oh, man, I'm going to have a hard time writing these 6s out. 6 over 2, 3, 4, 5. Wow. Cancel those out. Look at that. I end up with 1 over 6 squared, right? Because it's in the denominator. But I do not want, well, that's the first one as a fraction. The second one as an expression with a negative exponent. Now, since this 6 to the second is in the denominator, I can flip it to its reciprocal, and then it becomes 6 to the negative second. So my two answers, 6 to the negative second, or 1 over 6 to the second. Both of those are correct. By the way, just a side note here. This is a division problem, so if I subtracted the exponents, what's 3 minus 5? 3 minus 5? Negative 2. So I can still subtract that and still get my answer, hopefully. That makes sense, okay? All right, pause and do B on your own. And actually, go ahead and do C on your own. Please remember, write two different ways. One is a fraction, and one is an expression with a negative exponent. So pause it, and we'll try it again. Okay, did you pause it? Let's try it out. m to the fifth or m to the sixth. Another way to show that without me having to write all those m's is I'm going to divide it this way. Isn't that the same as m to the sixth? Uh-oh, hold on. Let me, let me erase that. I messed that up because I put that as a numerator. So let me erase that problem there. My bad. Okay, let's try this again here. So... If I go here and I say, oh, this is m to the fifth, but then in the denominator, I'm going to change it to m to the fifth times m to the first. That's another way to write, so I don't have to write five m's. Now this becomes a giant one, and I'm left with my answer. Now the answer doesn't just stay the m. It is under a one. So my answer, one over m. And I don't have to write the one if I don't want to. That gives me my first answer, which is a fraction. Second answer as a negative exponent. So if I've got m to the first in the denominator, now it's switched to m to the negative first. So there are my two answers. And by the way, 5 minus 6, negative 1. Okay. Last one, 10 to the second over 10 to the fifth. So if I just go 10 to the second over 10 to the second, and I'm just going to 10 to the third like that. So times, this becomes a giant one. I get 1 over 10 to the third, which is the same as 10 to the negative third. And again, 10 to the second, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So that gives me my answer as well. All right. That's a lot of information to give you, and I hope it made sense. Um, I want you to try the homework. I want you to see how you do on that one. Hopefully it works out okay. You have the worksheet again today, so either print out the worksheet or bring it up on your screen and do the problems off the worksheet. You will check it tomorrow, and um, we're going to keep hitting these negative exponents. Uh, we got a last day on negative exponents, and then we move on, okay? So please review, practice, okay? I hope that goes well for you. I hope that makes sense. Ladies and gentlemen, good luck. I'll see you later.